In this episode, I will talk about an event that people here on YouTube who keep an eye on the spread of this information most likely already know about. I want to talk about how this event is connected to events not only happening in the U.S., but also may affect what is happening where I'm located here in Taiwan. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. It has been known for a long time that Moscow has a well-coordinated network that is dedicated to spreading disinformation not only in the U.S., but all over the world. And it's no secret that every nation spies on each other. Anyway, U.S. intelligence agencies announced that they had uncovered a Kremlin-backed operation that was paying for a U.S.-based media company to promote content that favored Kremlin actions, most notably in Ukraine. Russia has been using its media outlet, RT or Russia Today, to fund right-wing U.S. influencers to pump out Russian propaganda. Two Russian employees of Russia, today a Russian state-sponsored media outlet, were charged with violating the Foreign Agents Registration Act and conspiring to commit money laundering. Now, keep in mind that Russia Today has been banned in Europe and here on YouTube. A link to the indictment can be found in this program's description. The defendants reportedly put up almost 10 million U.S. dollars through shell companies to fund and remote control the Tennessee media company Tenant to disseminate content that favors Russian interests. The U.S. media company employed the assistance of right-wing American social media influencers or commentators who often focused their programs on segmenting people or groups in America that didn't follow their political or religious beliefs or people they simply didn't like. These right-wing U.S.-based influencers or commentators each have a large, very large subscription base and a team that helps them produce content. These so-called media influencers carry a lot of water for those who want both their political and religious views to dominate everyone and everything in the U.S. Their ideologies are not bringing people together, but instead only tearing them apart. On this media network, people like Tim Pool and Dave Rubin have been the ringmasters in promoting Russian-backed propaganda. Now, their artillery flattening the eastern region of Ukraine, just wiping out some, some, some key areas. If Russia uses any kind of actual higher yield nuclear weapon, then it's World War III and they know it. But I don't know that it matters anymore. This is psychotic. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy, being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Now, I'm not saying that they and their fellow influencers or commentators knew exactly who was paying their media bills or the inside runnings of the media company that contracted their content. Anyway, anyone who calls themselves a journalist must definitely sh or should have the skills to search for sources like who is paying them. These so-called citizen journalists suddenly, suddenly develop selective amnesia. But the question is why? Are you serious? Tenet Media was founded in January 2022 by Lauren Chen, whose legal name is believed to be Lauren Yu Sum Tam, and her husband, Liam Donovan. Now, Chen was born in Quebec, Canada, and spent part of her childhood in Hong Kong. So I assumed that she may be able to speak Cantonese, Guangdonghua, and maybe Mandarin Chinese, Guoyu or Putonghua. Now, Laura Chen was also a host for a multiple of shows on Glenn Beck's uh, far-right media network, Blaze TV. For a little girl growing up Catholic today, will she ever have the opportunity to be a deacon and participate as a clergy member in the church? No. 
Okay, so I've had my fair share of criticisms of this Pope, but sometimes, guys, sometimes he does it right. Look, if you are a little girl growing up in the Catholic Church, or you're just an angry feminist woman who, let's face it, probably is not part of the Catholic Church, but let's just be real. There are many ways you can serve God and serve the Church that don't involve inserting yourself into positions of leadership where the Bible makes it clear you should not be, okay? Serve your family. Serve your Church in different roles, different callings if you're really that committed hey go join a convent if, if you ask me the women who are seeking entry into the clergy they're not actually trying to serve god they're trying to serve themselves they're they're power hungry they're doing it for ideological reasons now allegedly it does appear that the founders of tenet uh, chen and donovan knew their investors origins and possible financial source According to the SBI investigation, Chen and Donovan referred to their financial backers as the Russians. They knowingly gave both of their Russian financial backers access to the Tenant Discord server and the ability to post directly to Tenant's social media accounts. So the door is wide open for them. When the investors were asked about their financial source, they sent Chant and her husband a resume representing the background and expertise of a financer named Edward Gogarian. Now, this resume states that Mr. Gogarian is an experienced entrepreneur, professional financer, and investor. Well, guess what? It appears that this person doesn't exist. This resume appears to be made up. It appears that Mr. Edward Gorgarian is a fictional character. In fact, if you look carefully at the photo on this resume, you'll see an image of a man with his face blurred out. Now, for those of us who do a lot of video editing, we know from experience that this photo is a stock photo. It's a photo from a company that sells pictures to be placed in publications or videos as placeholders like this one. Lauren Chen and her husband never announced that their investors' fundings was possibly coming from Russia. However, it does appear that they were willing to sell their soul for hard, cold cash to promote views that infected many minds in the U.S. like that C virus. Their recruited influencers or commentators are now proclaiming that they are victims of this Russian-backed operation. Now, what the crap are they talking about? They never asked where their money was coming from. It was reported that for four episodes, at least one commentator made over $400,000 a month. Now that's $100,000 per episode. These commentators and others like them have been well-financed, useful idiots for government that has the goal to corrupt and quicken the decline of a nation that allows their citizens to voice their opinions and select who can lead them. Now, because I live in Taiwan, I know who else is watching the actions Russia is taking and is looking forward to use many of the same tactics to lean on Taiwan. The question now is, how deeply has the U.S. government allowed adversarial nations like Russia and China to infiltrate U.S. government agencies and groups? Now, before I finish my rant-a-thon, please listen to what Dr. Timothy Snyder, professor of history at Yale University and a permanent fellow at the Institute for Human Sciences in Vienna, has to say. If we follow Chinese propaganda about the ongoing Ukraine war, we notice a certain pattern, which is that the political warfare themes, which, as colleagues have quite rightly said, are meant to pass through us, have in fact done so. First, Ukrainians are Nazis. A Russian theme picked up by China echoed on the House floor. Second, it's all about NATO enlargement. A Russian theme picked up by China. Third, Ukraine is corrupt. A Russian theme picked up by China echoed on the House floor, echoed in the Senate by Senator Vance. Fourth, that, that, that democracies can't do anything about Ukraine, that it's all pointless. A Russian theme echoed by Chinese propaganda picked up in House discussions. Fifth, we should pay attention to the border and not do anything about Ukraine. A Russian theme picked up by China echoed in, in both chambers. Sixth, uh, 
the Biden bribe, a Russian theme picked up and echoed by China, discussed in this very chamber. I want to make it a point that those of us who live in nations where we have the right and freedom to express ourselves without fear of being jailed for saying things our leaders may disagree with, we must pay attention and stand guard against people and groups trying to create a fence or wall that blocks us from seeing the perils they present and place ahead of us. I have also noticed that a few Americans living here in Taiwan who happen to support right-wing politics and leadership are choking up and tripping over their tongues concerning this topic. I wish they would stop talking about how good Taiwanese beef noodles are and stop being dishonest or full of shit. I hope people in the U.S. and here in Taiwan pay more attention to events taking place around them and don't allow tribalism to tear them apart. We must always stay alert because people often get the leaders and governments they deserve. And because of this, I will again be posting videos on the Taiwan Blend YouTube channel on related topics. All related links will be listed below. Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe and download our podcast. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world. Because we have much more in common than we think.